Chapter 50, Saving Graces. Oh, thank you, Nikki. I need to hear your voice right now. Michael felt something different now, as the sound of Nikki's pleading voice brought him back center. For a moment there, Michael felt no care anymore in firing away, right or wrong, gunning someone down, no matter if he was then to get gunned down himself. As long as he had managed to take out the man with the giant white head, nothing else mattered. He was there already at that place. Dying time was now. When nothing else mattered and life was a sick joke, sick since it all had to end in such a way. But Michael would be damned to see Nicky go along with him. He might have not given much of a shit about himself and how he ended, as long as he ended while fighting. Right or wrong, at least still while fighting. But he'd be damned to drag Nicky along with him. The sound of Nicky's pleading voice was the only sound now resonating with him for even with the promise of death. Here felt now what she had to promise to Michael felt like life. Something that Michael hadn't felt in a very, very long time. Something magical almost, transcendent, like a spell. He felt her presence, and it felt the most real out of anything now. As much of a horrible person as she's become, at least she isn't yet what we are. Me and these sick fucks here. What she wasn't was a creature that took joy from the pain felt by others. What about the lady? Michael then quickly shunned that thought. They were still good in her. Michael saw it. Michael still felt it. And maybe only in a way a person like Michael could see. Making their connection ever more special now. Put it simply, he didn't want her to die. And the last thing he would ever want was for someone like her to change into someone like him or Miss Dorian. Damn, Nikki, what the hell were you thinking? Getting involved with a colossal asshole like this. Ah, shit. What do I do now? I gotta do something, something simple, something fresh. And then Michael magically knew exactly what he needed to do. And something special, only a special person like himself could do. Hmm, this colossal asshole sure does take himself seriously. I wonder how he'd feel about a joke or two. Ah, shit, don't do it, Michael, but fuck. I don't know what else to do. Ah, shit, shit's about to get fucking stupid. Really fucking stupid as hell. You know what? I think I finally figured you out, Mr. Dorian. The Fedora man looked all bewildered now, for he wasn't expecting Michael to respond so freshly after everything he had just said to him. Ah, fuck me, this is gonna get... I hope it works. I think maybe if you had just gotten laid in the last century or two, you wouldn't have turned out to be such a colossal prick, joked Michael as he bit his tongue. Mr. Dorian looked dumbfounded now, but also didn't, as Michael began changing the mood in the room in directions he was never expecting him or anyone to do so. He then cracked a smile and began to wheeze a bit at the young punk's tenacity. Damn, I, I'm a stupid idiot. Damn, this ain't... This ain't a high school locker room. Ah, oh, fuck it. Rompus pompus. Just be honest. When was the last time you got laid? About around the Civil War? It wasn't with your sister, right? Was it? Because I've heard fucking siblings or cousins back then was accepted. I mean, I've seen that guy with the wind movie. <laughs> Mr. Dorian looked like he didn't know what he looked like. Son, are you fucking kidding me? Do I look like some school yacht snot nose brat to you? I don't think I've heard anyone try to tease me like that since Herbert Hoover was in office. Do you know how fucking long ago that was? Just keep pushing. Maybe something will give. Come on, Grandpa. When was the last time you got some? You can still get it up, right? The fedora man busted out one and just about buried his face in his hands trying to hold himself together. Michael, although, wasn't exactly pissing him off, as he would have liked to have been, to get the effect he was planning, and he knew he had to change it up a bit. You know, you really are something special. You really are adorable, said Mr. Dorian then. Which then, what do you say, Mr. Dorian? Adorable? Started to give Michael ideas. Adorable? Retorted Michael then, as he got his insight how to do this. Mr. Dorian lifted up his head then, hearing him and his tone, and now had a squint in his eyes, as if he didn't like the direction this was headed. 
Adorable? Did you just say adorable? A pause and then you're not a faggot, are you? <laughs> and that, that there was definitely the trick that was needed. For damn, did it make a difference. Damn, for you could now see it in the change in the big fat headed man's expression. Michael knew how racist and homophobic these old codges could be. And he knew that that was what was needed to tip the scale. Hell, the shit I just dished be fighting was for people of my generation. I can only imagine what it would be for people of his. Mr. Dorian said nothing. Come on, old man, I asked you a question. You a Peter Puffer or what? Sass Michael then smiled. A what? asked Mrs. Dorian, looking all confused, since he didn't know the term. You suck dick or what? illustrated Michael, still holding that pestering smile of his. But then Michael backed off a bit as he saw Mr. Dorian's head beginning to grow even bigger. Almost big enough to start filling out the entire office of Nicky's. The man was still grinning ear to ear, but also seemed ready to burst out with something else. You little, you trying to test me? Do you know what I'm capable of? Asked Mr. Dorian as his smile began to fade away bit by bit. What, besides blowing angel eyes there? I mean, you two there seem to have more than just some father and son relationship going on. Michael then did a real no-no move and gave the man a wink. <laughs> wow, I'll tell you, I gotta tell you. I almost feel like ripping your heart out now, son, and eating in front of you. And then, is that all you want to eat out of mine? Joked Michael last, and now, give me that fucking gun. Called out Mr. Dorian as he turned himself around violently and tried to go for Angel's golden forty-four magnum. And this now was what Michael was hoping for, wishing his lucky stars to happen. Mr. Dorian's outburst broke the standoff off that was still going on between the three other men. And this was what Michael was hoping for. Michael now saw his opportunity to make a move, seeing as how Mr. Dorian was now standing in front of his two goons, drawing both Angel Eyes and the other gunsmen's guns away from center stage from Michael. And that split second mistake made Michael ran up fast behind Mr. Dorian and tackled them into the two other men. And Michael did it so hard and fast that at all four men were now on the ground as both Angel Eyes and the Mook lost a hold of their weapons. Michael then quickly got up and held the two unarmed men at gunpoint, then called to Nicky. Nicky, come on, let's go! As Nicky ran up to him, Michael then saw that one Mook is scrambling to get his machine gun back, but Michael got quick, ran up, and punted him in the back of the head that almost scalped at him. The man with the broken fedora then looked up in rage as he got to his feet. But his mood changed as he eyed Michael and strangely enough found himself pleased with the boy. How this young punk nobody had just gotten the best of him. Him. Nicky, get the AK, we're out of here. You think this is over, son? Michael then turned his attention back at Mr. Dorian. The fuck you say to me? Lashed out Michael aiming with his piece and trembling a little while doing it. Nicky got her hands on the AK as Michael held on the revolver, aimed at Dorian. You gonna shoot me, son? Well, go ahead. Michael, do it, cried out Nikki as she ran over to the elevators to call for one. Oh, you better fucking shoot me, dead. You better, because if you don't, I'll find you. I'll most certainly find you both, announced Mr. Dorian plainly enough. Michael held fast the piece in his hands and felt his chance to end this and end him. With all the hate and disgust he had developed towards him, there was nothing stopping him now, or was there? Feels like having to kill someone? You say? Let's see if it does. But as he looked at his mitts stretched out in front of him, he s the sight of them began to scare him. Like they didn't belong to him anymore, but belonged to the hands of another side of his. What the? S stop that shit now, Michael. But Michael felt his limits. There and felt how he just couldn't. For fear had been set up as a barrier keeping him from doing such. Come on, soldier boy, don't tell me you're turning green on me now. Michael couldn't believe it, he just couldn't. Michael, the elevator is here, shoot him, cried out Nicky. Shoot him? You seem like you're a little too eager to see that happen. As he continued holding on to the revolver, Michael regressed and decided to leave. And as he turned to do so, Mr. Dorian then said, You're both dead now, you know that, right? And nothing else. Michael then got to the elevators as the doors swung open and then ran in. Nikki stood there baffled out of her mind as to what had just happened. Since it wasn't something she'd seen every day, a fucking CIA agent getting bested by the likes of Michael getting called a faggot and blowing up because of it. Like as if men really never grow up, ever. 
Why didn't you just shoot him, Michael? You heard what his intentions were. You heard him say how he would now be looking for us, argued Nikki, expressing fearfully. Michael said nothing as he continued to think about what had just happened. Fuck, why didn't I shoot him? Michael, you do know a man like that could still come after us. You had your chance. Why didn't you take it? Demanded Nikki. And as Michael tried to come up with an excuse, the only thing that came to mind telling her was, Nikki, I'm sorry about Rad Boy. I couldn't control myself at the moment. A moment then passes, both Nikki and Michael felt the tension drain away from them. And now something else was felt. Something much more meaningful, which both now felt was in order, a comfortable silence. Nikki then drew her head back calmly and said, Honestly, Michael, don't be. And Michael now didn't know what to make of it. Tony is dead. I, Michael, he was planning on killing you, too, so... We you two were supposed to be engaged to be. But then Michael saw a smirk and a favorable one. And one Nikki knew Michael would favor. Michael, he said that just to get to you, said Nikki with that smirk. And now Michael was smirking also. You two never... And then Nikki just shook her head calmly again. And even though Michael felt like shit for what he had done, this now Michael couldn't help but to feel ecstatic about hearing what Nikki had to say. Me marry him? exclaimed Nikki as she quickly then shook her head in total rejection. Which now had Michael smiling. So what should we do now? asked Michael. Let's, let's just get away from this place, Michael. You and me. Let's go, announced Nikki as her smirk grew into a full-blown smile. And now something else began building up. A whole different foundation, like those preconceived emotional investments Michael had felt earlier. Once Michael heard her say, you and me, his eyes lit up. And then saw hers light up also, but brighter. She was now staring at Michael directly, and she was the old Nikki again, and not whatever that lady was Michael had to deal with earlier. I wasn't... I wasn't mistaking it then. We do have something between us, thought Michael as he finally felt the resolve he'd been looking for. The dream was true. And then Nikki took her hand and placed it over his heart and said, Yes, Michael, you and me. Michael's heart then began to jackhammer and almost felt like he wanted to burst out of his chest. Felt like dying, but in the way Michael would, would want to die. Now this was the moment, the magical transcendent moment Michael had really been waiting for all night long. This was the resolve. This was what was going to uplift him. This. He felt alive. Felt more alive and ecstatic than he had felt in almost forever. What he would have never felt with Latoya, nor Annabelle, nor any other woman except this woman here, her. He now felt it. The old touch, the old sensation. And what he felt meant to him earlier was now a proven fact. Magic, that no one's science could argue against. Now came the metaphysical moment, as he awoke, eyes open center, and saw the truth to all things, saw the complexity of it all, and understood not with thought, not by sense, but by something beyond all that, oh, completely. And then remember things forgotten, experiencing deja vu and remembering as a child, remembering this moment. Then looked into Nikki's eyes and saw oneness, as every moment with her came racing back. Michael blew up as he felt a cycle between him and her that accelerated with each revolution. The harder his heart began to pound, the harder Nikki smiled, leading for his heart to pound even more harder. And then... Felt like reaching maximum overdrive as it burst, as he died, and then as he looped... And began again. Let me die over and over and over and over again just to feel this again and again. Thought Mike as he felt that peace closing his eyes and allowed the spell to do to him what he had hadn't done in years. Changing things for the better and only the better. But then the doors flung open and Jaleel stood there confused seeing as what he was saying. Miss Jackson, what are you doing? Asked Jaleel. Ruining everything. Fucking everything. Jamil gasped Nikki as she broke off from Michael. And what they were having. Oh, don't do, don't stop. And Michael felt lost again. 